Hey everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to learn how to paint a forest path in acrylic paints. So let's get into it. So a nice easy tutorial today, you're going to need the following colours, they are titanium white, cat yellow, matte orange, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, chromium oxide green, sap green, iris purple, raw umber and ivory black. Now I've got a little canvas here that I've used um, burnt sienna just to stain it, I've used cobalt blue just to create an outline and I've used, just used some chalk just to create an area where the sun and some light's going to be. Now what we're going to have, we're going to have a nice path and we're going to have some sunlight at the end of the path and we're going to have shadow so I'm going to teach you how to paint forest shadows, how to create depths in your painting using colours and how to bring things forward using darker tones and make them bigger to create perspective. So if you'd like to pause the video and copy down the outline please do so and we'll get cracking. So the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to create the background and create some foliage and a background sky. So we're just going to get some titanium white on our brush and we're just going to put a little circle here in between these branches and just create a big blob where we're going to have the sun. Now around the sun we're going to create a nice light effect, we're going to use warm colours. So all we're going to do, we're going to get some cad yellow and plenty of titanium white and we're just going to make a Naples yellow, so a nice buttery colour. And all we're going to do is just create a glow around the sun. Now you don't have to paint your canvas burnt sienna, the only reason I do is when I'm using pastel colours like this colour and when we paint the sky, I find that burnt sienna shows me where I've missed areas of the paint. Um, in this video you actually see, because the paint is quite watery, sometimes you can see the background and if you were painting on a white canvas you might not notice that. So we're going to use this purple, now this is called iris purple, if you don't have it at home you can mix purple and cobalt blue together and you can get a cool purple and all we're going to do is add lots and lots and lots of white to our mix, so cobalt blue, a little bit of purple and lots and lots of white and you should get this very very pale lavender colour, so I'm just adding a little bit more white and the reason we do this is just around our yellow, we're going to use this purpley white as a buffer before we create a blue sky. And what this purple and white does is it just stops your sky going from green because if you add yellow to green, um, sorry, excuse me, yellow to blue, you will get green. So this purple just creates a little nice light tone, it's got a nice glow around the sun and it just stops your sky from turning green. So all we're doing now is we're just creating this nice glow around the sun and then we're going to mix a final colour to a darker shade. As you can see here that I was saying earlier, for some reason the paint's a bit watery today. It's very very hot here in the UK and I've got lots of um, water on my palette and I think it's just a bit too um, watery and it's not taken to the canvas. So we're going to get cerulean blue which is the lighter blue and cobalt blue and we're going to mix them together and add lots and lots of white. So cerulean blue and cobalt blue, add lots and lots of white please and we should get this lovely pastel blue. And all we're going to do is we're just going to block in the sky around it and as you can see that purple kind of acts as this little buffer. My paint as I say, it's probably because I'm filming. <laughs> I've got an exhibition this week and I'm pretty stressed and I'm doing this tutorial as quick as I can and I think that's why I'm in two minds and I didn't put enough paint on my brush and it's a bit watery so I'll go over it again and we'll make it nice and neat. But what we want to do is we just want to make around the um, glow blue and then here on the left hand side we want to make this all blue. So if you think the sun's going to be really nice and bright and it's going to be very yellow, we're going to have some purple going around it and then we're going to have this nice pastel blue and this is where the, there's less sunlight and the sky is a bit cooler. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go over these trees. Don't worry if you go over your trees or your outline. The good thing about the cobalt blue because it's very nice and dark you should be able to see it because this pastel tone it should still be able to shine through. 
So it's a great little color cobalt blue to use as an outline. So there we go. So as I say, look, just by adding a second layer of paint and using thick paint, less water, you can make all your colors look much more vibrant. Now we've got it laid down. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just adding some of this buttery yellow, which was cad yellow and white to create Naples yellow. And can you see now, just, just having thicker paint on my brush, not having so much water, it sticks right to the canvas and it just makes it look more vibrant, makes it look more electric. So all we're trying to do is just create a big circle, really, around your sun, just to create that glow. We're going to just make it a little bit softer so i'm just getting less less paint on my brush i'm just using the edge and the bristles of my brush just to make it a little bit softer around the edges that kind of looks symmetrical doesn't it and then we're just gonna get some of that purple and white hardly any water now <laughs> and then we're just gonna go around that yellow just softly blending it now a lot of this background we're going to cover up with leaves and foliage but it's a good habit to always take your time with your sky and try to get the transition right so then when you add the foliage and everything over the top and if you change bits you've got this lovely sky shining through so as you can see here look by just getting thicker paint and then just going over the top if you can dry your painting with a, a hairdryer by just reapplying a second layer of paint, you can get loads of the horrible burnt sienna background covered. But you can still see, because we're using pastel colours, can you still see some of the brush marks and some of the burnt sienna shining through? And that's the reason I paint my canvas burnt sienna, is simply for the fact, if I was using a white canvas, I might not notice that to the very end. And the worst thing in the world is to get to the end of your painting and not like an area. So look, just by drying your work with a hairdryer and just giving it a second coat of paint it can really make a difference and it just gets rid of anything that will spoil your work. So our background sky is really nice. We've got this lovely blended glow around our sun with the yellow into the purple and then we've got this nice pastel blue and that's all dry. So now we're going to work on some of the foliage and some of the trees. So we're going to use a thing called a fan brush which is a fan shaped brush. We're going to get some cad yellow and some white and we're just going to make a really bright creamy yellow so it's very similar to the glow around the sun and we're going to use the texture of our fan brush and we're going to leave little gaps i will zoom in for you so you can see and we'll leave little gaps in the background to shine through so by just leaving little gaps we can create the illusion of leaves so if you load up your fan brush you can get a fan brush just off um, any art shop for about a dollar or a pound they're very very cheap but they are very very good for painting leaves and grass they're very good for painting fur as well if you're ever painting animals so all we're going to do is we're just going to create speckles and we're going to try and create the illusion of bushes and leaves that are getting some of this bright sunlight and that's why they're so bright and vibrant with that yellow so all i'm doing i'm just using the edge of the brush I'm just pushing down and I'm just trying to create little bushes and I'm leaving little bits of gaps just so some of that blue can shine through to create the foliage. That's why I insist you always dry your work before you go on to each stage because again if you added yellow on top of that light blue and it wasn't dry it would kind of go a mushy green. So we want this really vibrant yellow so that's best to dry your background before you go on to this stage. So around the sun, all the trees, or excuse me, all the leaves that are, and all the bushes, they would be getting really radiant sunlight. So that's why we're just trying to use this really bright colour around our sun. So just take your time, let the brush do all the work for you. Fan brushes are excellent for painting leaves. So all we're trying to do is just create little splats and leave plenty of gaps. So we're just using the outer bristles. So we've 
just got this nice foliage. It all looks like a bit of a mess at the beginning of your paintings, but it's just having confidence to see that through and go past the messy stage into where it all starts taking shape. It's kind of like my metaphor for life. <laughs> Getting through the messy stage until everything comes good. Right, so we've done the yellow and we've laid down the lightest colour. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get chromium oxide green, which is a lighter green than sap green. Sap green is just a bit too dark. And, oh, excuse me, it's just a bit off camera, so sorry. But all I'm doing is using chromium oxide green and a bit of yellow. So you could use sap green and just add lots of yellow. But you kind of want to just keep on adding yellow to your green to get this sort of lime colour. So think of a lime fruit or something like an, a really bright olive just by adding a little bit of yellow to some green we want to create this sort of lime color and again we're just trying to create the highlights first we're just going to work sort of backwards today we're going to put all the light colors around this light source but we're still doing the same technique we're letting the fan brush and its bristles um, sort of create these foliage shapes and we're leaving little gaps so some of the background colour can shine through. So just like anything, when you're always painting leaves and trees, try to have them all sort of random shapes and sizes. Don't have them all the same and looking very square. So I always listen to music when I paint so I kind of jam out. So what I tend to do is just sort of move the brush with the rhythm of the music and just chill out. So just try to create random splats. Have some big ones, have some small ones. But what we're trying to do, we're laying all the leaves. So when we put the tree trunks and all the branches and things on top, all this will be pushed back and look like loads of bushes and trees in the far distance you see. So we're just going to frame that corner. So it's starting to look really cool. So we've got this nice glow and we've got this darker sort of green as it's getting further away from the sun but it's still got some little yellow highlights around its edges. So I'm just going to get some cad yellow. I'm just going to put some bright leaves just around this top bit now I know where everything's gonna be so now we're happy with that we're gonna get some of this chromium oxide green which is this lighter brighter green and we're just gonna add some orange to it so we're just gonna add some orange to make it a bit more browner a little bit of purple just to suck a bit of the color out and a tiny bit of cobalt blue to make it darker so we've got this dark musty green and we're gonna load up our fan brush and what we're going to do, we're going to create um, leaves and, and bits of foliage that is nearer to the viewer. So by using a darker green, what that kind of does is create sort of almost like leaves that are silhouetted. So we don't want to use things like black because that will bring it forward. So by using a darker shade of green, this looks like some of the leaves that are a bit closer to the viewer. And they're getting kind of silhouetted. So they're getting some of the colours sucked out but not too much. So they've still got plenty of green in there. Because we don't want to use too dark colors because if you use too dark colors, it brings it forward. So all I'm doing, look, I'm using the edge of this brush just to create sort of long ferns and long grass and bushes. We don't want to go too detailed because this tutorial is for beginners, but we do want to have, I want to teach you all the tips tricks of the trade to create the realism and then what you can do is you can apply all these little techniques to photos and to your own artwork and you can use them to make your work look super realistic because it's the colors and the brush techniques once you learn them you can just use them over and over again to match photos that you take and things to create your own art So let's have some leaves sort of hanging down. We'll put some branches in in a minute. 
kind of doing this out of my imagination, so I'm just trying to think where things should be. So we could have some hanging branches here with some little leaves hanging down just to frame the painting. I don't want to cover up too much of the sky in the middle because I want the viewer to look down the path to this nice sort of light area. But I do want to darken up the corners to get them to look down the middle. So I think what I'll do is, now I know where everything's going to be, I'm going to darken up these corners using this darker shade of green. So we could have a big bush and tree this side, why not? Coming down here. So just load up my brush. Look all that area in. So as I say, when painting woods and forests, it's a bit like you have to do each stage and lay a sort of foundation and it takes time but it's not actually hard at all it's actually very very easy so by starting with the bright color in the background and then putting the medium sort of shade of green and then the darker shades on top and then doing the branches and the trees it's, it's just sort of systematic but it's actually very very relaxing and very very easy so as I say hopefully you can take this all away and Create your own little masterpieces. Don't forget to tag me at Mstrip Paintings on Instagram with your versions of the tutorials because I like to shout them out for people. So don't forget to tag me so I can see them. So I'm just going to mix some green, some chromium oxide green, some cobalt blue, and some purple. I'm just going to make a slightly darker shade for this side because this side's getting less sunlight. I'm just doing the exact same technique. So I'm just splatting my brush, creating these blobs. But I'm trying to make this area a little bit darker simply because this area is going to be getting less sunlight because further it's away from the sun. And it's going to be a bit cooler. And also by making it dark in the corners, I get you to look down the middle. So I'm just going to do the same on this corner here. And then that looks kind of cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to mix a darker colour. So we add some of the chromium oxide green and some cobalt blue together to make a really sort of dark bluey green. And what we're going to do, we're going to try to use the fan brush sideways and we're just going to create some long grass and some foliage that we can make into leaves and stuff. So we just want to work on the colour and then we'll put the detail on afterwards. So we're going to come down to this corner and we're going to make this corner really nice and dark because we're going to sign it in the left hand corner. So we're going to make this corner really nice and dark. And then obviously this corner is going to be dark because if you think if the sun's in the far left top corner, so I'm just going to mix some more up the opposite corner, so this far bottom right corner, is going to be really dark and in the shade. So it's just trying to work out which areas would be cooler and which ones would be hotter in colour. So by using things like purples and blues, we can create dark sort of areas that are in the shade. And by using things that are hot like yellows and oranges and bright greens, we can make them look like they're in the sunlight. So all I'm doing here, I'm just trying to work out roughly sort of the shapes of some shadows. So where some tree shadows are sort of coming diagonal, I'm just making some rough shadows coming down into the painting. So where you have like a reflection onto the ground of the sort of trunk. So we're just using this dark blue. Again, just here on the left hand side, I'm just going to make it nice and dark. But you can see it's all starting to come together now, like it's all starting to take shape. Just got to go in each stage and just have patience. So again, this is just a darker shade of greeny blue to create the silhouette. So again, we want to use really nice, sort of the blue, what it does is it kind of pushes things back. Cobalt blue is really, really good 
for pushing things into the distance. So it's really good for outlines, really good for things like mountains in the far distance. So there we go, we can just make these trees a little bit closer. She's in that darker sort of blue, bluey green. And then we're just going to frame the painting in this corner. So I'm just going to print some here. Just in this corner, just to sort of frame the painting. And then just a tiny little last bit just here at the bottom, just to have some in leaves in the foreground. So we've created this really, really nice background now. So we've got the light effect around the sun. We've got this light coming down and sort of beaming onto the path. And then we've got our leaves and we've got our darkened corners to draw you into the middle. So what we're going to start doing, we're just going to start building up the painting. We're going to start adding things like the trees in the background and push them back using sort of softer colours. And then we're going to make these trees in the foreground much bigger and use darker colours and create perspective. So we're going to swap over to a flat headed brush. So a flat headed brush is like a flat headed screwdriver sort of shape. It's just got a flat head and we're going to get some black and some um, sap green, so black and some sap green and a little bit of cobalt blue, so black, tiny bit of sap green and a bit of cobalt blue, add a little bit of white just to make it a bit greyer and we should get a sort of bluey greeny grey, so there we go. Um, the reason we're using not black we're using a bluey greeny color is because we want to create lines so we're going to use the flat edge of this brush so a flat headed brush is really good for creating straight lines so it's ideal for painting tree trunks and when you paint a tree trunk you kind of want the base being thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top so once I move my hand you can see that the base is thicker where the tree trunk meets the ground and the top end is thinner. And you can use that edge to create diagonals so you can create some branches sort of going diagonal. And again, just like we did with the leaves, you want them all sort of different shapes and sizes. You don't want all the branches going in the same direction or at the same angle. We want to have them all different sort of, um, some thin, some thick. So look, if I create one here, I've got the base of the tree a little bit thicker than the top and I'm just using that really sharp edge look just coming down and just going over the base just to make it a bit bigger and because that color is not as harsh as say black what it does is it pushes it back into the distance so as I was saying earlier cobalt blue is really really good to create perspective so it's really good to make things look like they're far away in the distance So why not use that colour just to create some bushes? This could be some flat grass or something off in the far distance, why not? Can have some bushes and trees. Can have some branches hanging down. So if I zoom in for you, you can see it a bit easier. So you can use this flat edge to create branches. Or later on, I'll show you how to create really spindly branches with a different brush. So we just want to sort of block in the tree trunks first. So if you get sort of ridges like I have here with the canvas, just get a little bit of water, add more paint and just go over the top. Try to keep your hands steady. And you should just go over the top and you just make those tree trunks look a bit more prominent. And another little trick is to have some areas going behind the leaves. So leave little gaps. You don't have to do just straight lines. You can leave little gaps and it looks like part of the trunk is sort of peeking out between the leaves. So let's have some on this side. Have one here. 
these thin trees and being in this pastel color, what they do is they make them look further back. Whereas when we come into the foreground, we're gonna make our trees really wide and darker and that'll bring them right close to us. So we're gonna get our flat brush and we're gonna get some ivory black. So we're gonna get some jet black and we're gonna do the same technique, but we're gonna make our um, trees, we're gonna make them bigger and we're gonna make them wider to create perspective. So by using this really dark black, what it does is it brings it closer to the viewer. So it makes it look like it's right next to you. So, and by making it wider and chunkier, the tree looks bigger and it creates that it's nearer to you. So again, if you want to create perspective in any of your artwork, think of the colors. Think of using things like cobalt blues to push things off into the distance and try to save your things like your blacks for the foreground and then you can bring things closer towards the viewer. And this is what creates the realism. So if you think, look, this painting is not particularly detailed, it's quite scruffy. But once we start adding these trees, can you see it's starting to look really realistic? And it's not because of the detail, it's because of the colors. So just as I was saying before, look, you can create different shaped trees. You can have some that are wire shape, some that are straight. So just try to mix it up. So I'm just gonna make this one a bit chunkier. So this one could be a bit bigger. And then even with the shadows, look, if you think the shadows, these areas would be almost silhouetted. They would be getting hardly any sunlight. They're far off away from the sun. So their shadows would be really, really harsh. So where the, the uh, tree trunks are sort of blocking the sunlight, you would get really, really dark shadows straight away. So it's a really good contrast between the really bright lights and the really dark sort of um, shadows. So what I'm going to do, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this tree because this tree is going to be getting quite a lot of sunlight so it's actually going to get quite a lot of light coming through it. So if I'm going to block up just to about three quarters I'm going to just make it black and then so can you see here look, look at the difference between the pastel further cobalt blue trees and the black trees now we're zoomed out, you can really, really see it, how it creates a perspective. And just by making them wider as well, just makes them look bigger and nearer. So that's what I was just trying to teach you. So I'm gonna get a fan brush and I'm just gonna put a little bit of black just around this area, just for some leaves. And again, just to have some silhouetted leaves and just to frame the piece. I just wanna make my corners nice and dark. So I'm not gonna do much because I wanna keep that that background nice and pushed back. But of course, some of these trees are gonna have leaves. So just by having a little bit of black, you can just have some. So just a tad over here. Why not some over here? As I say, I'm just trying to think where I want them. Maybe a few at the top. I don't, because black is so overwhelming, you don't want to use it too much. You kind of want to use it sparingly and make it do its job. And as I say, look, you can add texture to things. So in a minute, I'm going to teach you how to do like leaves and sort of bobbles and grass. But what we want to do is we want to kind of gauge all the sort of colors and tones first in the painting. So these areas are going to be nice and dark. And then I like that cobalt blue shadow in the middle. That looks really cool. So why don't we put some texture. So these could be all sort of stones and bobbles in the path. And again, look, we're just darkening up the corners, just making these leaves, these silhouettes look a bit harsher. So it's up to you if you want to darken it or not. As I say, black is very overwhelming, so just be careful. Don't go too heavy-handed. It's hard to paint over. You can, 
but you get get a bit of uh, the black shining through. So I think that will do. I think that will do for the background. So I like the composition. I like how it's going, but I really want to add some heat around this tree. So I'm just debating how to do that. So. We did the sailboat the other day, we're going to do a similar trick, so we're going to mix some brown and orange. So the other day we painted a sailboat and we had the sun peeking through the mast, so why not do a similar trick where we use brown and orange to create heat and it makes the sunlight look like it's peering through the wire of this tree trunk. So we're using brown and orange to create a sort of burnt sienna colour. And by using hopped colours with the orange, what it kind of does is it makes it look like the sunlight is beaming through this tree, you see. So again, by using hot colours for highlights and cool colours for shadows, we can trick the eye. And you can even colour in some of the branches around that tree. I'll neaten that up later, but it's just to sort of show you the sort of general idea. So we'll neaten up that in a minute. So all these branches in this area would be getting the sun coming from behind it. So they would be extremely warm in colour and tone. And then you can blend it into the darker shades. So we can use some black just to sort of blend it in. And we'll see how that works. And then if we don't like it, we can always leave it to dry and we can always come back and neaten it up. So that kind of works. I think it's just a bit too dark. So we'll leave it to dry and then we'll get some white and some yellow. Just a tiny bit of yellow. So predominantly white with just a dot of yellow just to make a really bright whitey yellow. And this is going to be our highlight colour. So the sun would be sort of beaming into the um, path and onto the trees and if you've ever seen really really bright sunlight it's almost like a bleach it sort of takes all the color out of something it's just like a pure white so by just adding a tiny dot of yellow to it we can just make it not look so cartoony with if we just use pure white so by just adding a little tiny bit of yellow we get this really nice bright highlight color so what we're trying to do we're going to leave gaps i kind of like the burnt sienna colour is that kind of orangey pink it kind of looks nice so we're going to leave gaps between the highlights and we're going to use this really bright whitey yellow to imply where the sunlight is really really strong and then just by leaving gaps for the burnt sienna to shine through it will kind of leave areas that look a bit more in the shade and they're getting a little bit less sunlight still warm enough with that orangey sort of brown color so can you see how that works just by leaving little gaps like a little happy accident as bob ross would say so we're just having areas of this sunlight beaming through and that cobalt blue is really really nice as well for the um for the shadows it goes really really well it's not as harsh as the black. So I'm just using a bit of the chromium oxide green on its own now. And I'm just putting some lighter green. So these are areas that are just getting a bit of sunlight. So again, just trying to gauge the sort of colours where areas are in the sun. We're going to use brighter colours and where areas are in the dark. In the shade, we're going to use darker colours. So I think that's a bit too warm. I think that's a bit too bright, looks a bit cartoony, so we can use a little bit of it. So I'm going to go back to um, my sap green and cobalt blue and make a bit of the shadow tone, because I think it's just a little bit too bright. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make this edge nice and dark, again just to frame the composition. So our forest is, if you think like got all this sort of green sort of bank sort of a nice sort of grassy bank and you've got this sort of dirt track sort of in the middle so what we can do is we can use sort of edge of that brush like a fine liner and we can put little bubbles in to create terrain 
so you have little tufts of grass don't you coming in out of the dirt you have little things like stones and bubbles so what you can do is you can create little shadows so all these little tricks they're just to create you know more things for the eyes to focus on so we can have some in the foreground just little tufts of grass poking through Some leaves that are on the floor here. So this area would be all nice and cool. And then we could create more of a bank coming up here. A little bit of te texture here in these bushes. Just a little bit more shadow. Not too much. Just a tad. So we go that is looking awesome so i'm happy with all that so we've got this pushback background and we've got this really nice sort of bright highlights and harsh shadows so we're going to swap over to this really sharp fine liner brush so you can see here it's got a really long nib like a really long bristles and that's perfect for painting um really spindly branches so we're going to make some black blue and green that we made earlier. Do you remember when we made our far back tree color and some white? So black, white, a little bit of sap green and some cobalt blue. And we're gonna create this nice sort of bluey gray. And we're gonna load up this sort of really long elongated brush. And you can see, look, you can create really spindly branches with it. So again, you can get one of these brushes in a pack with a fan brush for a couple of dollars. So they're really ideal for painting um, things like branches. They're really, really good if you're painting things like straight lines or detail, things like hair, uh, eyelashes, things like that. So you can just load up quite a lot of thick paint on your brush and then just try with a steady hand just to create really nice branches. So again, the brush does all the work for you. You don't have to be really, really good at painting. It's just like the fan brush. It's ideal for the job. So, so there we go. So now we've got these trees and our leaves in, in the way. We can sort of put some branches in. We can have some behind, some in the foreground. Again, it just adds to the detail. So as I say, it looks all messy close up, but when you zoom out, it looks very, very real. So we just put really thin ones here in the background. We're barely touching the canvas. And again, look, you can use the same technique with the ones here in the foreground. So we can load up our thin brush with black and we can put some branches into these trees, make them look a bit more realistic. And now you've got that background put in now when you paint over the top here, so let's have a branch coming this way. Again, with that darker tone, it pushes the background back. So again, just by going over the top with a darker tone, we can add another layer of detail, you see. So let's just have like a bit wonky here, a bit breaking off. Branches, sort of wonky branches coming off it. And you can even just darken up the shadows underneath. So this trunk, I'll teach you how to paint bark in a moment. But I just want to darken up that trunk. So now we've got all the colours laid, and we've got all the sort of tones correct. So we've got nice blues to push things back, and we've got this black. In the foreground here, we can use black to start adding some detail. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some little stones and pebbles to the path. And also I'm gonna start creating some shadows and outlines to create sort of fallen leaves here in the foreground. So again, using a really harsh color to bring it forward, but also just by 
now we've got the colors all perfect we've got these different shades of green and we've got this light shining through with the highlights on the path just by look just creating little shapes and outlines and poking holes here we can create the illusion of texture so just like we did with the background with the sort of bright yellows and the lime green we can use this really harsh black to sort of create shadows and make it look like fallen leaves so why not do some little tufts of grass here in the foreground around the tree so these can be little harsh shadows so again it's just to texturize it and create the illusion of detail so around this tree we'd have bits and bobs Make this corner nice and dark. And then let's just put some stones and harsh shadows here on the path. Now we don't want to go too high up into the painting with the black because, as I say, it's really overpowering. So we'll go up to about the middle of the path and then we'll wait to and we'll get some of that blue so we won't go further than that and we'll get some of that color we use for the far off trees and shadows so we're just going to do the middle here so these are all the sort of shadows on the bank here so these are all really harsh shadows here here in the middle And then down here in the left hand corner, because we want to sign it, I'm going to make it really dark here. I'm going to make it almost black and completely. Because I always sign in white, so I always use a pen to sign, because it makes my signature look neat. So let's have some harsh shadows here, just add some texture. So all this area would be really nice and silhouetted. And then we're going to swap over to our darker shade again. So mine's dried a bit. So I'm just going to add some um, brown, some cobalt blue, and some green. So brown, cobalt blue, and green. I'm just going to make it shade darker. I haven't added any white this time. I'm just trying to make a middle area. So this is sort of a bridge tone. It's not as light as the far distance, but it's, it's not as dark as the black. So we're just going to use this tone just again to create some texture on the path, some areas of shadow. And it should merge nicely with that black. So trick your eye and make it look like it's just sort of fading away. So these are the shadows that are shadows, but they're not as harsh because of that sun sort of bleaching a bit of the harshness away from it. That's looking realistic. So we're going to mix another color um, that I've got pre-mixed here. But I'm going to teach you how to mix it, which is this really, really bright lime green. So you're going to mix yellow and green together. So cad yellow and the chromium oxide green, and then lots and lots and lots of white. And you should get this really nice bright lime green. And then what we're going to do, we're going to create just with a fine liner, we're just going to create little dots so just like we did with the far off texture and these are going to be areas of leaves and um, flowers and bits that are all getting bleached with the sunlight so again just doing the same trick where we've left little gaps in the underpainting to shine through and we've got these really harsh highlights of sunlight coming through the trees so by using this color with plenty of white, you see how bright it looks. We can have areas over here on the bank. They're getting really blitzed with the sunlight. So again, it's a really easy technique. Just take your time. 
If you're ever struggling with the tutorials, you can always pause them. Just take your time with areas and then come back to it. And look, you can use this color to create leaves as well. So all around here, look, just punching holes into the sort of leaves. So we can go in front of some of these trees to push them back. So that's what I was saying earlier. If you go in front of them, you can push them back a bit more. So we're just having some of these bright leaves. You can even have some in the sky. So if you had a picture and you were going like really photo, um, photo realistic, this is a really good color to use for sort of the highlights and sort of all the bright sort of bleached leaves and, and bushes. So all this area would be really harsh, wouldn't it? Really bright. Some leaves just getting odd bits of sunlight poking through. It's so all just extra layers of realism. And let's have just a few just pushing some of these trees back, just coming over the branches. down here just get a bit of sunlight so it's looking groovy so we're going to get some chromium oxide green and cobalt blue we're going to mix that together just get our shadow tan again and then now that's dry, we're just going to put some of the same highlights, but more in the shade. So where you've got these really bright highlights, you've got some areas that are more in the shade, but I think it's a bit too dark with the cobalt blue. So I'm just going to use the um, chromium oxide green on its own, I think. Because I think it's just a little shade too dark. Try it out. So we're just trying to do the same technique that we just did with the highlights. We're just trying to have some leaves and things that are a bit more in the shade. So I'm just using the chromium oxide green itself now. So just this color on its own. So these are all the leaves that are a little bit in the shade, a little bit in the sun. It gives a nice contrast. So again, same technique, you can push some trees back by just going over the front of them. The same on this side. And then now this is all dry, we're going to get some pure white and we're going to put our sun back in, much neater. So just like when we did our background sky, it was a bit scruffy, we can just go back and rework areas now they're dry. So we're going to create a big sh circle that's kind of coming through the branches. We're going to get some bright orange. Now I always use matte orange, you can use cad orange, it's exactly the same. Matte just dries a bit less glossy, that's why I use it. But you can use cad orange. So we're just going around the tree just to create this sort of bright glow. Just going to neaten up my circle. We'll get some yellow in a minute and put some background sky in in a minute. There we go. Just neaten this all up because this is going to be where your eyes kind of focus in with the sunlight. 
So if you just take some of that enabled yellow, you can just put back in the sky, just make it a bit more symmetrical. And then we're going to get some cad yellow. So I'm just getting some bright cad yellow and just outlining the circle of the sun just where it meets the orange. I think because it's wet, it's just not, it looks a bit scruffy. So we'll leave that to dry. So it's looking cool. And then we're going to get some white. Yeah. So lots and lots of white, just a dot of yellow again, but just a little bit more white this time. So it's just off white. And then we're just going to put with our flat brush really harsh highlights now. So our forest is all coming together. All the highlights and the shadows are all starting to work. So this area is getting bleached by that sunlight. So all these banks, all these ridges, just getting sort of taken over by the light. You can have it coming through the trees just to make it look more realistic. So just using the edge of that brush. There we go, it looks like it's bleaching through. And then here it's going to be really bright. And then I might do a little zigzag just sort of here where the path sort of goes in between all the bushes. It sort of follows down the road, why not? So let's make this bank really bright. Just coming down using that really fine edge of the brush. What I try to do is I just try to create little shapes because if you imagine you get funny sort of circles and blobs because the sunlight comes between the leaves. So you get all these different sort of shapes again. And we can even put look, some of the tips of these sort of leaves just getting really bleached in the sun. So just a little added detail. So we're just trying to follow it downwards across the path. I'm going to leave the bit in the middle with the cobalt blue because I think that looks nice in the shade. So I'm just going to go around it a little bit. But I'm going to leave it because I kind of like that cool blue in the middle. So it looks like it's a bit more in the shade. So some of these leaves are really, really bright. Now I think while we've got that color, why not we go around the sun and make it really bright. So we're gonna use this really bright color to go around the sun and we're gonna poke some holes in the background. So you might have seen this in previous tutorials I've done. We can create leaf shapes so we can have some of the sunlight coming through. So I'm just gonna take the corner of the brush and I'm just gonna create splats so it looks like sunlight is coming through these leaves. So what I'm doing, I'm just using the very sharp edge of this brush just to create harsh splats. And it looks like this sunlight, this really bright white yellow. If I zoom in so you can see it, it'd be a bit easier, wouldn't it? So look, if I zoom in for you, what we're trying to do is just create all sort of gaps coming through this sort of leaves. So load up your paint onto your brush. You've got plenty of paint. You can create really big fat splats. And it just looks like sunlight beaming through the leaves and the branches. So I can do some big ones here coming through. So as I say, just by going over the top makes it look like it's bleaching through the, the leaves. It's a good trick. If you've watched any of the other um, forest um, tutorials, they're all in the um, 
forest landscape playlist I've got here on the channel. You can poke holes back in. So that looks really cool on the left. So why don't we do that again on the right? So let's get some of that sky blue. So it was cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and plenty of white. So look, all I'm doing is exactly the same technique. I'm just poking holes. Now we've got all that texture in place. You can use some of that sky color just to poke some holes in and just create some of the realism. So I'm gonna get some of that bright yellow and white. So yellow and white. And I'm just gonna put some highlights on the foliage in the background. So all this area, again, just like the leaves in the foreground, this area, we're just gonna texturize it a bit just to make it look more realistic. So just this area will be getting loads of sunlight. So as the edges of all these leaves are just getting obliterated, getting really bright. It's really subtle, but I guess to say with all these little steps, they all add up at the end. So again, just by using a fine liner, you can just put some little leaves, just these ones. As I said in many of the tutorials, if your leaves aren't as vibrant, just dry it with a hairdryer your work and just go over the top with the exact same color. So with this bright white and yellow, and you can make them look really, really pop and really, really sharp. So that's really cool. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna mix some blue and we're gonna get some uh, orange, a little bit of orange, tiny bit of black, and some white, a little bit more cobalt blue, I think, and some orange. And we're gonna make sort of a gray brown. So we're gonna make this nice sort of gray brown color so mixing orange and blue and a little bit of that black and white we're just gonna get this nice gray and what we're gonna do we're gonna use the sharp edge of the brush and we're gonna make bark so by leaving some of the dark black underpainting and leaving little lines what we can do with the flat edge of our brush is we can create bark so if I zoom in so you can see we've got this nice black tree trunk and what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave a little gap. So we're gonna load up our brush, watch. And we're gonna go down on the edge. And then we're gonna leave little gaps between the color. So you see, look, there's a little gap. And what that does is it creates the illusion of bark. So a super easy way to paint trees that look realistic is to lay the shallow color first and then mix this sort of middle color, this sort of gray color. And these can be the areas of the tree that get in some light, but not too much. And just, you can texturize them so you can make them look really realistic. But you need that shadow color on first before you put this on. And it makes your life so much easier, you see. So that's our trees, got our bark, and then we're just gonna get some black and as I was saying about highlights, the same with your shadows. If your shadows aren't harsh enough, you can always go over with a second layer of paint. So do you remember when we did the sky at the beginning, the paint wouldn't take and it looked too watery? Well, if you wanna make your shadows or your highlights brighter or darker, just by going over them twice, you can really make them more vibrant. So I'm just making this black a lot harsher just by going over it a second time. Now it's dry, just reapplying the paint. And I'm trying to reapply it on the far edge that's not getting any sunlight. So if you think the sun's coming from one side, the other side would be almost silhouette. So that's all I'm doing. So the same on this tree, I'm just making the edges nice and harsh, just with black, a bit more shadow here. And then I think what I'll do is because it's still too harsh. If 
if I make these edges nice and dark. What we can do is dry our work and then get some orange. So I'm just getting really lots of orange here. And I'm just making this really, really bright. And I think I'll leave that to dry. And just where this is dried a bit dark, the thing with acrylics, it does dry darker. Um, your paint always dries darker. So I'm just going to put a little bit of white into some green and a tiny bit of cobalt blue. Just to make it a bit lighter in colour. Just with a little bit of white. Here I think it's just a bit too dark. So all I'm going to do is just make a lighter shade of green. Just because it's got a hint of white in it. I'm just going to add some more leaves here in the foreground. So all I'm doing, I'm just pushing a fine line out against the canvas, just to create little bubbles, shapes, just to create the illusion of leaves. I'm still leaving plenty of that black to shine through. So, and I want to leave that left-hand corner very black, because obviously I want to sign it. So I'm just creating some leaves, just coming all around our tree. And that's looking cool. Can have some coming down here at the bank here. I've come down to the bottom of the forest painting, but I don't want to go too far into the corner. I want to sign it. And I'm going to do the same here, just where it's a little bit too dark. I'm just going to put some texture just around this tree. So what we're doing for the next 5-10 minutes, we're just going to finish her off and we're just going to put all the detail just over the top just to make her come to life. The painting always comes to life in the last 5-10 minutes. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going over some of the highlights with the same colours just to make them really bright. So as I say, look, we've got our really harsh shadows now. We've got our really, really bright highlights. By just applying two layers of paint, it really does work with acrylics. Now this is a little trick. If you want to just stop here and just watch this bit, I'm going to show you a trick you can do. I didn't really like it, but I wanted to leave it in the video because I wanted some people at home might really like it. And that is to use highlights. So I'm using white with a tiny bit of yellow to create the illusion of the sunlight coming through the trees. So what I'm doing here, I'm using a really bright highlight color to make it look like the sunlight is coming through and it's beaming down on these leaves. Um, I kind of didn't like it, I, th I thought it looked a bit strange, but people at home you might like it. And I thought I'd leave it in the video because it shows you how to do it. So if you want to do this effect at home on any of your work, all you do is you go from a really, really bright, high, harsh highlight with the white and yellow into the really bright white and yellow and green. So we're just making a little bit darker highlight either side of it. We're just using a fine liner just to create these little sort of splats. So it looks like the sun is coming through those leaves. And if you like it, you can leave it on your painting. But I think it just makes it a bit, it's a bit too harsh. It's a bit too bright. I want, I want to make our corners nice and dark. But I thought I'd leave it in the painting because, uh, in the tutorial, excuse me, because I thought it's good for people to learn how to do it. So what I'm doing now, I'm just getting some of the chromium oxide green and blue and a little bit of white that we used previously. And I'm just going over the top of it just to make it look less harsh. But it was just a way to show you if you want to add harsher highlights in the foreground, you can do. And if you don't like them, as I say, look, you can always paint over them. I'm going to leave a few of them just so they're poking through. And all you do, look, is you just get some of the green and then you can get some of the black to put back in the shadows like I'm doing now. So you can just texturize it again. So it's no bother if you want to do it. If you want to have a harsher highlight in the foreground, it's very up to you. So I'm just painting back my tree. So there's nothing you can't change. That's the great thing about acrylics. You don't have to wait necessarily for ages to dry. You can just dry it with a hairdryer. So now this area is dry. I'm going to lighten it up massively. I think it's just a bit too dark. So we're going to get some orange and we're going to get some raw umber. So orange and raw umber. And we're going to zoom in and we're going to make this a lot lighter. I think it's just, it doesn't work. 
So we're going to color the tree trunk itself in this nice sort of burnt sienna color we just mixed. And we're going to come down onto the tree trunk and make it look like it's all the sunlight is coming through. And we're going to make these branches, what we should have done earlier, we're going to make them look much more orange, I think. I think where we tried to do it, the paint didn't take and it's just... It's not worth so just by going over them a second time we can just make them look brighter. So I'm going to still leave the dark top at the very top and just sort of merging into it. But all around the sun I want it really really orangey to emphasize the heat. So I'm just going to come down into that darker sort of grey bark that we made earlier. So just same technique, just come down and then these spindly ones I'm just going to make a bit lighter in colour. Just so it looks like the sunlight's coming in. So just think of warmer tones around the sun, so nice oranges. So this nice sort of orangey brown just makes it look like it's really nice and warm. We've already done the hard bit, we know where everything's going to be. And there's going to be a bit of sunlight going on the, this uh, tree trunk I think. So we could even do the bark trick with a nicer colour, couldn't we? So same trick, we're just leaving gaps in the dark shade. and We're just using this nice warm sort of burnt sienna colour. So we're just trying to work out where the sunlight would be. So all these areas sort of in line with one another. We just want to kind of make them a bit lighter in shade. A bit warmer, excuse me. So that looks really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some brighter orange now. And we're just going to merge it into the colour. So we're going to make this extremely vibrant now. We're just going to come down and just blend it into that wet paint. Just to really emphasize the heat from the sun. So just around that circle. And then we're just going to get some bright catch yellow. And we're just going to emphasize the circle. So we're just going to go around it. Which dried a bit manky, we're just going to neaten it up. We're just going to create that glow effect on the trees. So again, if you have to give it two coats, you have to give it two coats. It's very worth it. So there we go, we've got this awesome glow with the sun. And then we just put the white back in. Just make it look like it's coming through the trees. Taking away a bit of that trunk, a bit of that bark. Nice circle. Look at that, that looks cool. So now we've got that glow around the tree, starting to look really cool. See, I told you it all comes together in the last bit. So we're gonna mix some orange and yellow and a tiny bit of um, raw umber. So orange, yellow, and a tiny bit of raw umber. So we're just gonna make this sort of bright yellowy orange with a tiny bit of brown. We've got a little bit of white just to make it a little bit more pastel. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna create the bark trick. Now we've got this hot back color behind it. We're just gonna add some bark over the top. So same technique, we're leaving gaps in the underpainting. But now we've got this sort of bright, sort of fleshy tone. We're just gonna create some of the bark on these trees. So let's have some here on this big chunky tree. So look, I'm leaving little gaps, just so it looks like the bark. And it sort of blends really nicely into that burnt sienna color. There we go, look at that, that looks awesome. And we can put some here, just make it a little bit brighter, why not? just on these branches because these will be getting really loads of sunlight being so close. And it all 
will always dry darker so it will pick up some of that dark color and then if you imagine the left hand side is super bright and warm this side would be getting sunlight look some of the sunlight would be hitting this tree so we don't want it too warm we don't want it as warm as the the highlight we just made so what we're going to do is we're going to put some of this cool purple into that color so by adding purple you can make it look a lot more softer and not as harsh and it makes it a little bit cooler and then just on this edge we could do the bark trick again and we've got that nice gray to blend it into so we can just have this edge of the tree getting a bit of sunlight and then that nice gray sort of blends really nicely into it just put the finishing touches on that tree and then we'll have a little bit here on this edge just getting a bit of sunlight I'll zoom in for you so you can see so same technique we've got this cooler more purpley orangey color so if you imagine the sunlight's just hitting this edge just edge it do the bark trick so we're just leaving little gaps it should merge with that cool purple that we did previously so just that edge getting some nice sunlight And I think when we zoom out, I think she's finished. So look at that. So I've signed her in the bottom left hand corner. So you've learned how to do a glow with how to do lighter colors in the background to create the illusion of light. We've got cooler colors and darker silhouetted colors in the foreground to make things look realistic. You've learned how to use shadows. So we've got the thinner trees in the background with the more pastel cobalt blue to po um, push them back. You've got wider, harsher, blacker trees to bring them forward to create perspective and also to darken our corners to get the viewer to look down the path. We've got this lovely warm um, contrast and then we've got the cool purples to create heat and shadows. And you've also learned how to do sort of the reflection of the forest onto the path with all the lovely shadows. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Murray. I hope you've enjoyed this forest landscape acrylic painting tutorial. There's plenty of other painting tutorials here on my channel, M Stuart Paintings. We have lots of um, over 100 painting tutorials now on the channel. Please tag me at M Stuart Paintings on Instagram with your version of the tutorials. And I'll see you next week for the next tutorial. See you later. Bye.